How well do you know wetlands? History tells us these places were once highly valued and were in effect biological supermarkets providing local communities with food, fuel and building materials. Today, wetlands still deserve their superstore status as they continue to provide essential services both for local and wider communities. What they provide us with is down to how we value and choose to manage them. Welcome to the Inch Marshes in the Cairngorms of Scotland. For those of you who have never been here or don't know where it is, it's actually just up the A9 on the way to Inverness by Ruthven Barracks. This is a very extensive wetland that runs five kilometres in that direction. That's three miles in Old Money and the River Spey flows right through the full length and when that river's in flood, the water spills over and is held in the wetland. Wetlands can help alleviate a problem that is uppermost in many people's minds, the effects of flooding on homes and businesses. Wetlands can hold back vast amounts of rainwater, often for short periods of time, and release them gradually into our rivers and burns. This is an essential process during times of severe weather and above average rainfall. Wetlands contribute to food production as the lush wetland pastures provide grazing for cattle, resulting in healthy and tasty meat. In the last 200 years, our rivers have been separated from their floodplains. This has had a consequence for wetlands as well, because wetlands and rivers often interact. So in the future, we would like to see more natural processes on our floodplains, with rivers moving within certain confines, because very often embankments are so hard to actually maintain and very costly. And it may be a better option just to allow the river to take its natural course within reason. Wetlands may cover many square miles or just a few acres. These dynamic habitats are found right across Scotland with many recognised for their European importance. How we choose to manage these sites makes a difference. Here we are cutting back the reeds to extend and improve the grazing ground for cattle. By cutting the vegetation we can encourage fresh young growth that is palatable to the stock. All this cutting means we have tons and tons of this material. Just look at it. This is just a small amount. In the past, this would have been used for thatching on houses, or alternatively, it had been using for bedding for livestock. Today, we have to think of alternative uses for this. It's a wasted resource. We possibly could pelletize it and use it as a fuel for heating houses, or it possibly could be combined with slurry to produce biogas and again energy. But whatever we do, it has to be a very local solution. In the Scottish borders, the Whitlaw mosses are a much smaller site. Here we shall examine how the structures of wetland plants have adapted to growing submerged at significant depths in water. This is the rhizome of a reed, and this will grow down to about two feet underground, where there's no oxygen at all. And what actually happens is as the air goes across the top of the reeds, it's sucked down into the lower reaches and along these rhizomes and through the hollow stems. And then this provides not only oxygen for the reed itself, but for a whole host of microbes which will break down noxious chemicals and uh, take up other nutrients that are impurities in the water. Often when water arrives at wetlands, it is impurities like silt and pollutants but there is a wonderful natural process at work here. So after several days of percolating through the wetland, the water becomes purified and all the sediment drops out. Leaving a water good enough to drink. Fantastic. Wetlands not only provide a wonderful habitat for plants and animals, but they can actually provide a habitat for humans. The reed beds, for example, behind us, they were used for thatch in the past. The reeds were cut in the winter when they're dry and the leaves have fallen off, and then the resultant material is put onto roofs. This can last for up to about 25 years on a roof if it's laid properly. 
In addition, more recently, people have started looking at reed beds to produce biomass, and that biomass can be burned to produce electricity. Reed beds could be a sustainable resource of the future. What's actually happening in the wetland is that you're utilising the basin effect or the basin shape of a wetland, the topography, to hold the water. In this particular case, the pipe restricts the amount of water that goes out of, out of this wetland and as the flood waters rise, the pipe gets fuller and fuller and the water will rise to about the bottom of my feet. And then over the period of three or four days, it subsides and goes back down to normal levels. And in that, we can actually modify how much water goes down into the river system further downstream. The wetlands of Scotland are remarkable places providing many benefits. This includes grazing for cattle, shooting game birds, foraging, fuel, and last, but most definitely not least, the management of flood water within catchments. With predictions of increased storminess due to climate change, wetlands will once again become an important part of our lives. Across Scotland, work to improve visitor access at wetlands is ongoing. So why not have a day out and visit a wetland near you, or even visit the Inch Marshes or Whitlaw Mosses and see for yourself these wonderful places.